Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a special version of Love and Murder. Tonight, we're going to do an update on Gloria Williams and Brian Coulty. So I am your host, Kai. I am not joined by Char. This is going to be a really short show. It's just an update show because this case is ongoing and I kind of just want to keep y'all updated on what's going on. Um, This is Love and Murder where we talk about relationships gone terribly wrong. And usually by this time, I'll say, when I say terribly wrong, how wrong do I mean? And Char would say dead wrong. So if you've listened to to us before, you know you can find us on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, You can also follow us on our social media. Links are in the bio below. And if you want bonus episodes, just updates, like I'm doing now, or, you know, you want to talk to us, crazy true crime stories, anything like that, uh, just visit us on patreon.com forward slash love and murder and become a subscriber. It's just $3. If you listen to our show before and you like it, then please go to Apple Podcasts, hit the purple button and give us five stars. You can say whatever you want in the description and what it does. It helps bring us up in the charts. Now, uh, Let me start off by saying that this episode is only to update you on what's going on in the news with this case. It's only for true crime education and it includes my opinions, which I guess I can give. (laughs) It's just my opinion. I'm not saying this is how anything should go. I'm just giving you the updates and then my opinion. So for this entire story, we're going to go ahead and use the word allegedly. So on our last episode, uh, it's called Abandoned. We told you about the case of Gloria Williams and Brian Coulter. Um, Just for a brief recap, they'd left Gloria's children in an apartment with one of the kids being dead. They barely fed them. They barely saw them or they barely took care of them. They just barely did anything with them. Neighbors were actually giving the kids food, but they didn't call CPS or the cops for a courtesy check of the kids or just even one kid because some of the neighbors said they didn't know there were more kids. So even for one kid, even though they knew they were home alone, the 15 year old ended up working up the courage, which I commend him for that, and contacted the cops one day and told them that his brother had been dead in the house for a year and that his mother had just left them in the apartment. When that happened, of course, you know, cops rushed right over, surveyed the scene, took the children, searched for the parents, found the parents, questioned them, released them, and then later on arrested them and then charged them. Brian was charged with murder and Gloria was charged with injury to a child by omission, injury to a child causing serious bodily harm uh, and tampering with evidence, namely a human corpse. Now, for the full case, if you want all the details and everything like that, then go back and listen to episode 32, which is called Abandoned, and you'll get more in detail and intricate, um, you know, just information about the story. And now for the update. So Brian Coulter went to court on Thursday, October 8th, 2021. Initially, He'd actually missed his probable cause court appearance on that Wednesday because he had a mental health evaluation. Guess they found him competent to move forward. According to court documents that were read aloud during the probable cause hearing, which went on without him, by the way, it was revealed to the court that Brian beat Kendrick Lee, the eight-year-old boy who was brutally murdered. He beat him to death in front of his brothers. The boys said that Brian hit Kendrick in the face, the feet, the butt, the back, the legs, the groin, and he continued to kick and hit Kendrick's body even after he'd stopped moving. Now, what in the actual blankety blank, 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 blank. During the Thursday hearing, Brian signed a legal consequences form and an emergency protection order. The legal consequences form says that he is not allowed to have any direct or indirect 
contact with any of the three surviving children. And if he were to make bond, part of that condition for the bond is that he would be required to wear an ankle monitor while under house arrest and he can't have any contact with Gloria at all. Also, both of their cases are going to be transferred to a new court because the initial judge in the case recused himself. Now, honestly, I probably would have done that too because there's no way that I could be partial. I, I wouldn't be able to be partial in this case. Like for instance, if for some reason the jury found them not guilty, like I can't think of why they would, but if for some reason they found them not guilty, me being the judge, I would overrule them and find them guilty. So I know that I wouldn't be able to be partial. And I think probably that judge saw that too. So I definitely would have been like, I'm, I'm not doing this case. So anyway, being that the judge stepped down, this is probably going to affect Gloria's hearing. Now, speaking of Gloria, remember she was on a $900,000 bond? Well, her bond was raised on Friday, November 5th, 2021. The judge raised it to $1.5 million. And he raised it because he called the $900,000 bond, quote, insufficient. Wow. Now, Gloria's attorney, whose name is Neil Davis III, said that the bond, quote, isn't reasonable and that he needs to, quote, find out more information about his client's, quote, mindset. Sorry, I'm putting all these quotes, but this is what he said. He also said that he doesn't think that Gloria fully understands the severity of the charges she's facing. And my question to that is, well, basically, let me repeat that. My question to him is, quote, based on what? What are you making the assumption that she's not competent, that she doesn't understand what she did, that, you know, she shouldn't be facing all of the stuff that's going on with her? Where do you get this assumption from? Based on what? And I call this the audacity. And I just want to say, don't come at me in the comments telling me that that's her lawyer and he has to say things like this. Like, seriously, I don't care. <laughs> like, I really don't care. Take into consideration what she allowed hap to happen to her son, like, and what she did to her other kids and allowed to happen to her other kids. So literally don't care about her judge and what he's supposed to say or her lawyer and what he's supposed to say. Oh, oh, by the way, her attorney also said, quote, I don't want her to be painted in the same light as the co-defendant. Don't you though? Don't you? Just kind of sat there and let it happen. Now, if you've listened to our episode 32, Abandoned, you would have remembered that Gloria had the apartment uh, that the kids lived in and the other one that her and Brian lived in. Side note, before I tell you this little tidbit that I'm about to tell you, the apartment her and Brian lived in was fully furnished, like somebody actually lived in there, cozy, nice, you know, pictures on the wall, uh, an accent wall, uh, coffee table, couches, TV, fireplace probably. I'm just making this up. It probably didn't look like that, but still it was fully furnished and nice and a place people would live. However, the apartment where her kids lived, which was on the third floor, was empty. Yeah, what a piece of trash. Le yeah, yeah, I agree with her attorney. Let's find out if she's competent, shall we? Ugh. Anyways, back to what I was saying. The way she was able to pay for everything, because I sure was wondering, because two apartments, seriously? Anyways, the way she was able to pay for everything is that she collected about $2,000 in government assistance a month for her children, including Kendrick Lee after his death. Yeah, competent or not. She received financial assistance for each child who had a disability and Kendrick was believed to have been autistic as well as one more of her, her children. One of her other children were autistic as well. 
She also continued receiving funds for her oldest daughter, who, by the way, was no longer living with her. Really? Remind me, please, somebody. Remind me how she's probably not competent and doesn't understand the severity of what she did. She can't understand murder, but she can understand money. I mean, maybe because it's... No, they both start with an M. I... I, I, I don't know. How can't you understand murder? Not just murder, murder of your child. But you can understand money coming in. Mm -hmm. Anyway, remember that she didn't tell investigators that she didn't report the abuse or the death because Brian told her not to. Well, she came back with another reason. I guess people were like, mm, really, just because he said not to. So she had to come back with another reason. She said she was also scared that Child Protective Services would take her children away and she would go to jail if she reported the murder. Yeah, you let somebody murder your child. Do you think you're fit to hold the rest of them? I, I'm kind of confused here. Whew. Anyways, so when we last spoke, we didn't know where the kids were. Well, the update on that is that Child Protective Services got emergency custody of them. I'm just, I'm just, I just feel so bad for those poor children. Like, really? I really hope, I don't know what's going to happen, but I really hope if they're supposed to go to another family, they get a good family. And... Mm, Secondly, I guess I was going to say most importantly, but secondly, um, they get the counseling that they're definitely going to need. So Brian Coulter is set to return to court for an arraignment on December 15th, 2021. And Gloria Williams is scheduled for a court appearance next year. And eight, well, would have been nine years old this year. Kendrick Lee is dead. And that is the update for Gloria Williams and Brian Coulter. And if you like this episode, quote unquote, because I don't even like saying that for the end of this episode. And if you like this update or that the fact that I gave you an update, um, even though this was a really, really short episode, then go to Apple Podcasts and, you know, rate us there. Five stars, whatever. <laughs> I don't even want to go through the ending of the show because I'm so disgusted by Ugh, these people um don't forget to visit us on patreon become a subscriber for bonus episodes and i know i'm not sounding all excited <laughs> look this this thing has me like down but anyways um yeah it's only three dollars www.patreon.com forward slash love and murder um follow us on social media facebook.com forward slash relationship crime instagram at love murder podcast uh, our Facebook fan group so you can, you know, continue on with the conversation in there. Uh, just search love and murder fan page. You could actually search that in Google. You could search that in Facebook, wherever. And if you like true crime merch, then you can go to loveandmurder.threadless.com to find true crime merch on there. Or you could actually just go to our website, www.murderandlove.com. That's love and murder backwards, murderandlove.com. And go to our shop there and you could find all your true crime merch there. So that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends. And as I always remind you, you know, please love your kids. Please love your husband. Because here at Love and Murder, it is all love and no murder, y'all. Good night.